there's a growing body of evidence to suggest that the human microbiome, especially the gut microbiome, may be a source for potential biomarkers, uh, leading to therapeutic discoveries and potential diagnostics. The range of success in different disease indications has varied from very murky in the context of, th of obesity and metabolic disorders to much more pinpointed in the case, or at least uh, a higher degree of consensus across studies of diseases like IBD, especially Crohn's disease, and colorectal cancer. Um, as we look from study to study and we look from uh, the, the discovery process, what people will often do is, is look for case control comparisons or look to dietary interventions, looking for signals. These may be individual microbes, they may be from consortia, and an idealized situation would lead to the discovery of single strains or potentially bio bioactive molecules that could be used for therapeutic um, purposes. As I mentioned, uh, we've had a, we were seeing a, a range of success. In, in studies of obesity, we find a low degree of concordance or, or infrequent concordance across studies with respect to potentially important biomarkers. We see uh, more con concordance or a higher degree of success in animal models, but when we translate that to humans, we find that obesity-related microbes are often inconsistent, and um, this may be that it's not one particular type of microbe that leads to obesity, but it may be a change in the way microbes are functioning in the gut that leads to that, that ultimate uh, phenotypic change, or contributes to it, rather. In contrast, when we look at something like IBD, especially Crohn's disease, we see more concordance across studies. In fact, recent publications are suggesting that microbiome composition in Crohn's disease can be used as a prognostic indicator of re uh, remission and relapse, or relative response to certain um, therapeutic agents. Similarly, we see uh, predictive biomarkers appearing in the context of cancer. Colorectal cancer, especially in the context of potential early diagnostics, but also other cancers and in general oncology uh, with respect to potential response to immuno-oncology agents and in more traditional first-line chemotherapeutics, where baseline microbiome composition appears to be indicative of one's ability to respond to treatment or have a lower burden of, of symptoms and complications associated with treatment. So all in all, we're seeing a very exciting time right now in, in the field of microbiome and gut microbiome and potential applications that would lead us uh, truly through translational stages from preclinical and early discovery phases to actionable information and potential new treatments and therapies in the clinic.